The past two PowerPoints took a look at how microorganisms adhere to host cells, went deeper into host tissue to colonize. This PowerPoint will look at the strategies that microorganisms have to overcome host defenses. Remember that adherence and colonization requires going through the first line of defense, which are the skin and mucous membranes. Once deeper into, this, into the body, organisms can hide within host cells in order to avoid the immune system. They will have to avoid complement, avoid phagocytes, and avoid antibodies. Hiding within the host cells, some organisms evade host defenses by remaining within host cells. We looked at Shigella species, which use the antigen sampling cells to gain access to deeper tissue. Shigella can hide within epithelial cells in order to avoid the immune system. It can move between cells by a process called transcytosis. Transcytosis uses the cell's cytoskeleton to propel the bacteria from one cell to the next using what's called an actin tail. Listeria monocytogenes is another organism which can hide within host cells and use transcytosis to propel itself from one cell to the next. Listeria monocytogenes is a gram-positive rod. It is an intracellular pathogen. It causes listeriosis, which is a severe infection that can lead to death of immunocompromised patients, miscarriages, and meningitis. Remember from Chapter 14, Innate Host Defenses, that complement proteins are present in blood. They circulate in an inactive form, and the presence of bacteria activate complement. The end result of complement activation was the enhancement of inflammation, the activation of membrane attack complexes, and oxonization. Bacteria that try to colonize our bodies will have to avoid complement proteins in order to prevent destruction. Gram-negative cells are more susceptible to membrane attack complexes, com complement proteins. MACs have little effect on gram-positives. Some gram-negative organisms have developed the ability to prevent activation of C3 complement. With that, they prevent activating the complement cascade. These organisms are called serum-resistant gram-negatives. Neisseria gonorrhea is a serum-resistant gram-negative organism which prevent activation of C3 complement, thus preventing activation of all other complement proteins. Neisseria gonorrhea is a gram-negative diplococci. It is an intercellular parasite that causes an STD called gonorrhea. You should now be able to answer the following questions. Why would some gram-negatives develop serum resistance? Why don't we see serum resistance among gram-positives? Serum-resistant bacteria bind complement regulatory molecules. The LPS, lipopolysaccharide, of these organisms is responsible for the binding. Are these organisms gram-positive or gram-negative? 